Okay, you have created the map, placed the events, and set up the collisions. Perfect, right? Now you can start writing dialogues and telling your story. Uh, right, here you are. I didn't forget you, main character. I've been exploring and experimenting in this mechanics with RPG Maker for a few years now, and I've concluded that there are four important aspects to consider when creating the character for your side-scroller game. This is Sidon V, and in this video, we'll explore how to best configure the main character in your side-scroller game. Let's not waste any more time and get started. The animations of our character are extremely important. The player will spend the entire game looking at them, so it's crucial that it has been made with care and attention. As we've seen in a previous tutorial, using the Gav Character Animation plugin allows us to use a sprite sheet that enables our character to idle, walk, and run. You may have noticed that our character's sprite sheet has four columns. Well, the last one containing the jumping animation. Thanks to Galv's Jump Ability plugin, our character can jump a certain number of tiles. It won't be like playing a platformer, but it can be a nice feature. Now, not everyone is skilled in animation, and perhaps you prefer to stick with something simple to enhance your character's look. In that case, I suggest using the Mog Character Motion plugin, which makes the character breathe slowly with a simple plugin command. You can also make the character fly, disappear, shake, rotate, and apply other cool effects to any event. The last two plugins I want to recommend in this section are Galv's Character Frame's Step Sound Effect, which simulates the sound of our character's footsteps, and the Galv Character Frame's plugin that allows you to use more frames for each animations. Character Movement. This is a very important topic that I will definitely revisit in a future video dedicated to mapping. Side-scroller games made on RPG Maker can be divided based on how the player interact with the map. For convenience, I've summarized these patterns into three groups. It's important to note that this is a personal classification, developed after testing on RPG Maker MV for some years now. Classic Side-Scroller The player moves right and left on a line of passable green tiles, always maintaining a sideways orientation. Events are placed on the green line in below the player mode. Directional side scroller. This is very similar to the first one, but in addition, the player can face towards the background and towards the camera, allowing for greater interaction with the environment. In this case, the only change from the first movement type is the addition of two animations for the up and down directions in the sprite sheet. Events in this case are placed both on the green line in below the player mode and on the strip of tiles above and below the player in same as player mode. Beat em up style side scroller. In the last movement type, the player can move on different green tile rows in all four directions while still maintaining a sideways orientation. Thanks to the 2D fixed direction plugin, the up and down directions are removed, keeping the character facing right or left. I suggest you also use the Galv Diagonal Movement plugin to make the movements smoother. Character Size Let's consider a map with a standard size of 13 times 23 tiles, which is 1,904 times 624 pixels. If we place our standard character with a height of 8 tiles, it will occupy more than half of the screen. But what if we want a smaller or bigger character? The first method is the simplest, decreasing or increasing the size of the sprite sheet using a drawing software. On my itch page, you can find sprite sheets of different sizes, all ready to be used. The second method involves duplicating or halving the size of the map itself, for example changing it from 13 times 23 to 26 times 46 for a larger map, or 8 times 14 for a smaller one. This way, our character will appear smaller or bigger compared to the map size, achieving a different field of view according to your needs. Real-time ability. Now that we've decided how our character will move on the map and adjusted the animation and sprite size, we're all set, right? 
Do you really want to go through there? Well, I'll help you. With the ZE Key Mapper plugin, you'll have the ability to remap the keys on your keyboard, allowing you to use the WaySD layout for player control. However, you'll also need the Heim Common Event Buttons plugin, which allows you to assign a specific common event to a keyboard key. Let's take crouching as an example. After remapping the keyboard to use the A and D keys for lateral movement, I created a new common event so that when the S key is pressed, the player's sprite sheet is replaced with the appropriate one. I repeated the same process for the W key so that when it's pressed, the player stands up. By activating the crouched switch, the player can pass through the event that previously blocked their path. And with that, I believe I've covered everything. If you enjoyed the video and want to support the channel, subscribe and give it a thumbs up. Take care game devs, and see you soon in the next side tutorial.